Uh, and so for our last talk today, we have Adam Benzion. Uh, he's going to talk about conservation AI. The world's most advanced wildlife tracker is now 100% open source. And so I will turn it over to Adam. Hopefully. Thank you, Catherine. Cool. We can hear you. Looks like you can see everything. Wonderful. Okay. Go to town. Awesome. Good. Hi, everyone. Uh, good to be here at uh, the Open Source Hardware Summit. One of my favorite events of the year. Um, last time I was uh, in the flesh in the event, it was actually at MIT in Boston when you guys ran the event, which was awesome. So I look forward to uh, seeing these events come together, you know, in the real world soon, because as we all know, it's a big community gathering and you see all your old friends, which is awesome. So I'm here to tell you about a really special project I worked on. And for those of you who don't know me, I, I, I was a co-founder of Hackster.io and I've left uh, Hackster after almost seven years, a few months back, and now I work at Edge Impulse. And what I'm showing you today is a project called Elephant Edge uh, around conservation AI that I worked at while at Hackster and uh, still working on it uh, at Edge Impulse. So I'll take you on a journey of, um, of how I got to do this fun work and important work, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Let me know if my slides are moving. Um, okay, so let's start with something hard. You know, we've, we've seen these pictures before and we tried to avoid them and I was almost reluctant to putting such a harsh picture, but it's, it's real and it's probably not even the hardest. Bad humans do this every single day. And statistically, the rate that elephants are being killed in the wild for their ivory and all sorts of other reasons uh, are, as you all know, it's an average of 15 minutes a day. Um, this is a real picture of a real elephant that was shot with a poison arrow. But I'm not going to leave you with that terrible picture. Uh, good humans do this every chance they get, get. These are park rangers that actually found that particular elephant. These are not just some stock images and managed to actually to remove the arrow, uh, clean the wound, uh, and help this animal um, survive that particular attack. And it's good news. This particular uh, elephant actually managed to get up, walk away, and survive and live another day. Uh, I would have hoped they also <laughs> would have removed some of his tusks, because I suspect that's why he was shot. Uh, but, you know, this also sounds wrong in itself. Why does, does these things actually happen? And uh, can we help more good people do more good things in the world and stop the bad from happening? So when you see these images and you read about this in the news, and we all know about this, it's, this, uh, this is not news um, for any of us. You know, we, we step back sometimes in life and say, we all have so many resources and there's so much technology and knowledge out there and, uh, and, and all sorts of things that we can do. And by the way, technology is not the answer for everything. There's all sorts of other issues we should discuss. Maybe not at the Open Source Hardware Summit, but culture and, and perceptions and all sorts of things that create this kind of uh, terrible situation. But as technologists, there's so much more that we can do to help park rangers um, to avoid these terrible situations. So in 2020, early 2020, uh, right before the lockdowns, um, we ran into Smart Parks, an amazing organization from the Netherlands at an event in actually in Holland. And uh, we, at Smart Parks is an organization that builds these amazing elephant collars and rhino trackers and rhino tag tra trackers. And, um, you know, we met them in an event and we had this idea to build one of the most advanced elephant trackers that ever existed. And, deploying it in the wild and we call this project elephant edge and it was just an idea we just kind of had a chat over coffee and he said what if we actually managed to do this and we didn't really know what will it take you know what will it take to actually build this whole thing and, and even ship a product uh, so that's a question we asked you know what's it take to design the world's most advanced wildlife tracker that is powered by advanced machine learning and assisted by a community of developers that can actually build some of these algorithms and dashboards, almost as an app store that can help uh, park rangers really understand what is going on with these elephants wherever they are. And I've learned through this project that um, there's, there's so much you can learn about wildlife and understand what wildlife is saying uh, simply by creating almost translators to their behaviors and sounds and voices and the way they move and understand what is happening with them in any given condition, not just tracking where they are, 
uh, around, you know, at the park, etc. And with elephants, for example, I've learned that elephants speak with their feet. So you can learn a lot about elephants by understanding what do, do they actually do with their feet and understand uh, are they under some sort of a, a threat or just learning about them, uh, about their biodiversity and life. And the one thing we said, we don't want this to be a theoretical project that we just, you know, did a little, you know, uh, design of something that somebody else should actually build. We actually said, if we build this, we have to ship. And let's ship at least 10 colors that will be deployed on elephants in 2021 in the wild. So, okay, so what does it take? So we figured it took $150,000. $150,000 will take to design, uh, engage a community, and ship 10 finished colors uh, in the wild by this year. Cool, so $150,000, well, I did not have $150,000 to give, and uh, so through Hackster, I worked at Hackster at that point, I you know, reached out to all these companies, uh, you know, uh, Western Digital, Microsoft, Avnet, who owns a Hackster, and other companies like Nordic Semiconductor, Earth Ranger, which is a Vulcan company, Tau Glass, Edge Impulse, the company I work for now, and Ublox. And um, we talked to them and said, we have this vision to build this incredible tracker, which could also be an amazing commercial use case for you guys to show what can people build with your technology. Would you help us? Would you sponsor it financially? And a lot of these people and a lot of these logos you see here said yes. These are not like big company policies that we have to support the wildlife and do stuff for the environment. These are actually individuals in these companies that actually felt that this is the right thing to do. They moved around marketing dollars that are typically dedicated for commercial use and said, this is absolutely the right thing to do. We are going to uh, uh, pay often tens of thousands of dollars to help you guys build this and see this uh, vision come to life. So there's a lot of good people everywhere and I kind of want to take the opportunity to thank all these logos here and the people behind them. If, if you watch it, you know who you are for really making this happen because you know these things do cost a lot of money to do. Okay, so we got our money and we got started. So we're on. So uh, with that, we actually had a two-phase approach to uh, building Elephant Edge. We hired a company called Irnas. It's an amazing company in Slovenia, and they're experts in building, designing, and manufacturing wildlife trackers. They also do all sorts of other very advanced IoT uh, uh, solutions and products for industry, but they have specialized on, on wildlife tracking devices. So we hire them, and they're amazing. So check them out if you have a chance. And we have managed to deliver working prototypes uh, in Q4 of 2020, which was great to see. We actually saw the enclosure, the circuit boards, everything was already done and ready for testing. Um, we're committed to ship the 10 working colors by uh, Q2 of 2021 to smart parks. And smart parks, again, even everything is happening in the world right now with all the constraints will uh, deliver these trackers and go there, not just deliver them via UPS, actually show up and help uh, selected parks, deploy them, learn how to use them, and learn how to use something that they've never had before. Um, new machine learning um, applications, so to speak, that really help park rangers do things that they could have never done before. So these trackers, they can live up to eight years on, on, a, on the neck of an elephant, can do things that you've never seen before, and they can also get updated continuously and uh, do more things that they weren't designed to do initially, which is really awesome, something you couldn't do in the past. So Elephant Edge got a spec, which was awesome at that point. We used a Nordic Semiconductor SOC, uh, U-Blox uh, GPS module, Semtech LoRaWAN uh, transceiver, which you know is really a requirement for a project like this. Um, and then a lot of sensor, you know, an STM um, accelerometer, we got a Western Digital storage card, um, STM, uh, e-compass module, an audio center, sensor, and microphone from ST, and also uh, the, the, you know, the secret sauce really is the software, is the Edge Impulse um, inferencing engine that can create all these applications, and uh, an IoT dashboard from Avnet called IoT Connect. So now you kind of know why I moved to Edge Impulse at some point, because uh, I just love it so much what this company does. And, uh, and as, as it pertains to also uh, wildlife preservation. So that was a little bit of my, my personal career transition after being a hackster. Okay, so at the same time as we worked with Irnas on building the hardware, 
We also did a lot of work with Hackster and Hackster's community. So if you guys know, Hackster has about 1.6 million developers on its community network, I think about 30,000 open source projects and big advocate of the Open Source Hardware Summit. Um, and what we knew is that what we're missing is, is the actual machine learning models and dashboards and the telemetry dashboards. So what we've done is we called to the Axter IO community as an engineering challenge, you know, and we told them, go and build all sorts of uh, ML models so that can satisfy all sorts of problems and needs that the rangers have, and then we can later on install them and test them on the callers. So we had 241 engineers and developers and hackers joining the contest, and we're really thrilled that 31 high quality models and dashboards were delivered at the end of the challenge. So in some respect, now we had, we had the hardware, we had the software, we had the awareness that this is really interesting and important, and the project is, uh, was well in its way. And it's really interesting to also think about how this whole thing came to life. It's really hard to tell developers to go and build um, machine learning models on theoretical hardware you don't even have access to. How are you going to do that? But the, the fact is that we had access to data sets from Parks uh, and from Vulcan, who runs Earth Ranger, and from all sorts of really awesome partners, the World Wildlife Fund. They gave us access to elephant data sets. So using open source hardware or even like, you know, low-cost cameras like, say, OpenMV, uh, the developers could actually almost create like a digital twin of the environment that uh, the Elephant Edge tracker will, will be operating in and creating models based on that. So they created models based on human conflict monitoring, elephant activity monitoring, poach risk monitoring, and elephant communication monitoring. Uh, and they were able to build the data sets, test them, and theoretically in the future, we'll be able to deploy them onto the devices. And what's really cool is this is a screenshot I got from uh, one of the developers at work who worked on this project, and name is Sarah Olson from Sweden. And she would use an OpenMV camera to take snapshots of some of the data sets or otherwise images that she found on the web in the wild, and then move them into the studio, the Edgeful studio, and then create the models based uh, on, the, on this raw data that she was importing with the camera. And then she was able to write the models against that. So very creative and very inventive way of doing these things, which was really uh, absolutely exciting to see how people in this industry and in particularly people in the open source community are so inventive and there's, <laughs> there's nothing you can do to stop them. They just are resourceful and they know how to build things even with very minimal resources. Uh, and yes, just one more thing. This is the open source hardware summit. So of course, we open source everything. Um, everything that was built here, uh, as far as the hardware and the software, is going to get documented on OpenCollar. OpenCollar.io, by the way, is also an organization that started by the two amazing guys. Uh, it's Smart Parks. And it's a collaboration and conservation design to help deploy open source tracking colors, hardware, and software for environmental and wildlife monitoring projects. Um, and here's the website. And this also will be shared on Wild Labs, of course. Um, but what's interesting about that, that if you think about it, you, you can take these kind of um, trackers and you can retrofit them. It depends on size, et cetera. You know, elephants trackers are huge. Uh, orangutans could be smaller and cheetahs could be even smaller. But you can really put them everywhere and there's no need to go and reinvent the wheel. Everything is out there. It's open. Anybody can go and replicate them and build from it uh, and add more to that repository so other, others in the next generation people can actually do even more with it. So that's, I think, to me, was also one of my private, proudest moments when Smartpox uh, suggested we actually open everything. And I was like, listen, this is exactly what we have to do. And uh, it really jives with our, you know, um, our vision for, for the future. So this is a little bit uh, of how these trackers look like. So the guy on the left uh, with the black T-shirt, that's Tim Van Dam. He's one of the co-founders. Uh, and my partner here, my partner in crime from Smart Parks, he's holding uh, a real life uh, elephant tracker, one of the early versions of this tracker. I think it's uh, 50 kilograms. <laughs> and like I said, this thing can last up to eight years. Uh, well, at least the new tracker that we built. And uh, through the LoRaWAN network, uh, repeaters, um, 
you can actually access uh, this color hundreds of, hundreds of miles. And because it has now uh, machine learning models and inferencing in wake calls and wake sounds, these trackers can actually be completely dormant and not record a lot of information unless there's a trigger, uh, the exact same way how you speak to an Alexa, et cetera, then wake it up because the elephant's either accelerometer or microphone, et cetera, has done something to create a trigger and to send information through the LoRaWAN network to the park rangers and alert them of something, maybe an anomaly, something that shouldn't be happening. So that's a little bit how this looks like. And this is it. This is my presentation. So I want to thank you. I think I'm the last guy here today. So I, I, I watched most of the pre presenters today. It was really fun to see a lot of familiar faces. Thank you, uh, Open Source Hardware Summiteers. And if you ever want to talk to me, I'm Adam at edgeimpulse.com.